normally by this time of the year for news folk, for news people, we're in silly season. There aren't many stories about nothing much is happening and everyone is doing the Christmas shopping and planning the holiday. Not so in the year 2022. It seems that politics and political controversy will simply not lie down and take some time off for Christmas. The latest, um, well, story that in the course of a week has seen public pressure and outrage from the legal community force a an embarrassing back down for the government has been the entrenchment clause in the controversial Three Waters legislation. The clause would have made it difficult, in theory, for any future government to roll back certain aspects of the bill. It would have taken a 60% majority of parliament. Not a constitutional lawyer in the land didn't say this was an abuse of New Zealand's uh, constitution and a true threat to democracy. The Prime Minister, well, I didn't know about it, she said. We'll have a look into that. That would be very, very bad. And having done so, she flicks the hospital pass to Chris Hipkins, who is Mr Clean It Up for the Labour Party. And on Sunday morning, he announces that those provisions of the bill are going to go back before a full committee of parliament, the, the full committee of parliament, and will be removed. So, a victory in some ways for common sense. But the whole affair leaves us with the question, were Labour try and the Greens trying to pull a Swifty and they got caught, or was it sheer incompetence? Well, to perhaps speculate on that a little further, um, from closer to the action than I am, is uh, joining us now is Chris Bishop, the uh, National MP for Hutt South and leader of the House, Chris. Uh, National's leader of the House. Oh, we seem to have lost him. Hello? Not oh, no, we've got you there. That's great. I'm just not getting you through. Uh, look, we're going to ring you back, Chris. We've got a slight technical. Uh, no, I can hear him. Can you hear us, Chris? You're coming through the phone. He's coming through the phone line on my desk, not through the phone line. We're going to ring you back, Chris, if you would hang up. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. Um, yeah, strangely enough, Kelly, that was coming through the phone literally on my desk and the speaker on my desk. So has something been reset? Are we all right? Ah, and I will try. Ah, there we, there we go. We've got you on the right line now, Chris. That's fantastic. Um, let's get into it then. Uh, firstly, this is a, <laughs> just a week to force a back down on that. This must have been a very silly idea in the first place. Oh, it's totally ridiculous. Um, and you know the government should frankly be ashamed of itself for for trying to do it. Um, you know the Green Party and Labor colluded to uh, this unconstitutional anti-democratic action, and um, you know they've finally seen sense. They've seen some sanity, um, but it took sort of a week of you know the great and the good from the constitutional law side of things, with Jeffrey Palmer and Dean Knight and a lot of that, but um, you know public law academics, plus also the rule of law committee of the New Zealand Law Society got involved as well. So um, it wasn't just the National Party kind of, you know, raising raising pretty better about this. It was um you know, all sorts of different people. So they put them away and they got there in the end and as you say, um the Cinder I did assemble their way through it and then um you know and Chris to clean it up. Well well I guess a casual observer would say Labour said, Oh Eugenie Sage to this we really didn't know it was going on. Um, do we have any evidence to the contrary for that rather generous interpretation? Well, we're, we're still trying to get to the bottom of exactly what happened. So about a year ago when Three Waters first kicked off being a serious issue, the government um, you know, said to everybody, oh, we're thinking about entrenchment because we're really worried about privatisation. Now, it's, it's worth remembering, the only people talking about privatisation are the Labour Party. The National Party wants to keep... Uh, ownership of these water assets and local control. We're not interested in privatising them. Um, so the only people we're talking about are the Labour Party. So then the Attorney General kind of gave advice to the Select Committee and said, no, look, entrenchment's only for constitutional provision. This is not one. You shouldn't do that. Mm. So they sort of gave up on the idea and everybody sort of assumed that they had. Turns out the Greens didn't get the memo um, and went on board with that. And Eugenie Sage had been kicking around this idea of a 60% threshold for a while. Um, she hadn't really bothered to tell anybody about it, but it certainly was 
complete news to me. It seems to be news to the Labor Party. And, um, I think it was even news to some of the corporate colleagues, to be honest. Mm. Anyway, did she, we're, in a, we're an agency on the house for, this, um, for the water services bill, and um, she just puts this SOP up. You know, it's the dead of night, basically. Um, you know, the house has been sitting for hours upon hours to go through this bill, and someone in the Labor Party decides to vote for it, and it's done. That's simple as that. Yeah. All right. The problem now is, I'd say, the problem of perception. Everyone's going, oh, victory against the government and against the Greens on this tiny provision. The fact is Three Waters, which is a hugely controversial piece of legislation involving all sorts of aspects like the co-governance issue, and it has now expanded to, in fact, be five waters, though Winston would say, and Peters would say, eight waters. It's almost as if we say, oh, we've got a victory. Well... No, this legislation is still being passed under urgency with a huge amount of public disquiet about it. So I, I'm not sure that you could claim this as a win. Well, it's a, it's a win for the unconstitutional bit. So you're right on the, um, on the wider issue, and we're trying to stop the wider bill going through. That will probably go through, um, I would say, tomorrow or Wednesday, um, unfortunately. Um, so, look, we've been pushing back at it. You know, we've arranged for 55,000 people to write to the select committee, and... Most of those people weren't allowed to submit, obviously. Um, but, you know, look, with simple reality is the numbers don't lie in politics and um, Labor has the numbers and they're going to ram it through despite the public opposition. Yeah. I think it's quite extraordinary. And but the most frustrating thing is that there is, a, there is definitely a middle path through here, right, where um, you get rid of all the code governance stuff, you get rid of the uh, exclusive ability for EWE to provide mana whenua, uh, sorry, to, to Mana Ota Wai statements, uh, and you um, retain assets and local council ownership and uh, have some accountability back to local communities. Um, but you um, you move forward with the reform of Three Waters in a way that um, deals with the underlying problems. There's no, there's no dispute that we have an issue with water infrastructure in New Zealand and it needs a solution. Um, the, the real dispute is with what the government's proposing, which you know, many, many people think is a dumb idea.